Hi. This time we're going to take a look at vector masks. We're going to use the custom shape we've made, but you can also just use the pen tool, of course, or any other custom shape. Vector masks use vectors to mask out part of a layer, so they're infinitely resizable, resolution independent, and always have clean, sharp edges. They're used primarily for cutting something with clean edges from its background, for making design elements, including web design elements, and for use in print work where you want the edge of an image to be as sharp as possible. There's several ways to make them. All you need is a path. So let's make a path from our stop sign shape. If you haven't made one of those, you can make one following the earlier tutorials. There are links in the description, or you can use any old custom shape you want. First, make sure the layer where you want the vector mask is selected. Then, get the custom shape tool from the toolbar, and make sure that it's set to paths up here by clicking the center button. Then just hold down the shift key to constrain it proportionally, and drag out the shape. Use the spacebar to position it where you would like it in the image, and when you like what you've got, let go, and there's your path. Then get the arrow tool by tapping the A key, which when you get really doesn't matter at this particular point. Just get one of them, and then right-click and choose Create Vector Mask from the drop-down menu. And there you go. There's the first vector mask. And this is what they look like in the layer panel. You can see the little black lines that are your path, and white where your layer is visible, and gray where it's not. In fact, they look exactly like the paths in the paths panel, mostly because they are. You can also see them up there if you happen to have it open. So that's one way. Now these are masks, which means that you can drag them around inside the layer panel. So let's make one a different way. I'm going to hide that layer, and I'm going to go back to the custom shape, and this time I'm going to make a shape layer. So once more, hold down the shift key to constrain it, and use the space bar to put the shape where you want. And this time when you let go, you will have a shape layer, which as you can see is just a color layer with a vector mask on it. Now that you know what vector masks look like, you can spot it easily. And since it's just a mask, we can hide this layer and make this rusty red texture visible. I made this texture in FilterForge. And then just click on the mask and drag it to the new layer, and it masks the new layer. So now I have a rusty red texture that's masked with my vector mask. So that's the second way you can make them. The third way is to select the mask that you want and get the arrow tool. And for this, we need to have the path selection tool, which is the black arrow. And then click on your path to select it and copy it with Command C or Control C on a PC. Now I can hide this layer and I'll make the rusty white visible and select it and click once on the new mask icon to make a layer mask and a second time to make a vector mask and then just paste. That's Command V, of course, Control V on a PC. And now I have a mask on this layer, vector mask, that precisely matches the one that's on the red rusty paint. And I'm going to delete the layer mask in between because I don't really need that anymore. Now I used a vector mask to make that, but you don't really have to. You can use any kind of path, of course. So that's three ways to make them. Now there are some differences between vector masks and regular layer masks. And to show you some of those, I'm going to go to a different image. This is a picture of a clover. And notice that this time, the vector mask is on a pattern layer, because you can use any kind of layer you want. It really doesn't matter. The vector masks work with all of them. Now first, repositioning a vector mask is not quite the same as repositioning a layer mask. If this were a layer mask, I could just get the Move tool by tapping V, and then I could unlink the mask and its layer, and I could just click and drag to move the mask. But since this is a vector mask, even though the mask is what is selected here in the layer panel, what I'm moving is the image. And that's because these are vectors, and you can only select vectors with the arrow tool. So if I get the arrow tool and click directly on the path to select it, then I can move it around any place I want. And I can use the arrow keys to move it in 1 pixel increments, or I can hold down Shift and use the arrow keys to move it in 10 pixel increments, and I can put it just about wherever I'd like to have it. And I can even link them again so that the layer and the mask are linked and still move the vectors because I'm moving the vectors. I'm not actually moving the mask at all. So that's one of the differences. Another difference is that unless you have CS4 or better, you can't feather the edge of a vector mask and you can't invert it. Now if you have CS4 or better, you can feather it, and you do that by going to the mask panel. And I'm going to click on the tab to enable it. If it was not visible, you can go up here and um, choose 
masks from your Windows menu. And because I want to be able to see the layers at the same time and I have a very little area here, I'm going to double click in the gray area to hide the paths and double click in this gray area to show the layers. Now when you're in the masks panel, all you have to do to feather the vector mask is move the feather slider. And as you can see, that feathers it beautifully even though it is a vector. And the best thing about it is that it is non-destructive so I can move the feather slider back to zero and go back to clear, sharp, clean edges if I feel so inclined. So that's uh, feathering, which you can do in CS4 or better. However, you still can't invert it. Notice that the invert button here is dimmed. So what do I do if I don't want to have a clover? I want to have a clover-shaped hole in the background. Well, that depends on exactly what kind of path you have. In this particular case, since this is just a single path, all you do is get the path selection tool and just click to select the path and then go over here to the combine area up in the panel. Right now it's set to add and all you have to do is click the button to set it to exclude and for all intents and purposes you've inverted it and now you have a clover shaped hole in your ground. So that's what you do if you have just one single path. But what do you do if you have a complex shape like this in your vector mask? Let's select this, and because I still have the arrow tool, I can select all of these paths, and you can see that I have quite a few of them, and they are already set to exclude. If I set them to add, it doesn't invert it, and it doesn't if I set it to subtract, intersect, uh-uh. So let's go back to exclude. Is there a way to make this look as if what I've actually done is inverted the mask? And the answer is, yeah, there is, and it's not even hard. Just get the rectangle tool, make sure that you're set to paths, that your vector mask is enabled and that you are set to exclude up here in the combined portion of the bar and then just draw a rectangle that's larger than your image and for all intents and purposes you've inverted it because you've changed what's excluding what so that's how you do it if there's a lot of paths in your vector mask now let's go back to the stop sign here for a minute in this particular case I would like to invert parts of it I don't want the whole thing inverted I don't want to have the white showing where I have the edges here. I just want it showing on the border and the letters. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, there is. This time we're going to use the direct selection tool. Make sure that the mask is enabled. Then I'm going to hold down the option key, that's Alt on a PC, so that I can select an entire subpath, and I'm going to click on this second octagon. And when I do that, I've selected that whole subpath. You can see that the path, the rest of the points are all hollow. And in this one, um, see they have these little white edges. And this one, I have black squares here, which shows that this entire subpath has been selected. I don't know if you can see that on the video. You'll be able to see that when you're working with it. And then just hit delete. And because this path was also set to exclusion, what I've done is change the number of paths, and that's changed which ones are excluding what. And now I have the white letters and the white border, and I can combine that with my red stop sign and get exactly what I wanted. And that's all there is time for this week. Next time I'm going to show you some of the really cool things you can do with vector masks because there's some really neat stuff coming up. Until then, this has been Robin Wood and I hope you found this helpful.